it is firing on all cylinders here at Cloudbreak. And I cannot tell you what an honor it is to bring this event to you. Thank you again, IWT, PWA, the Unified World Tour has brought us to Cloudbreak. And this is absolutely justifying the means. It is about to go down, you guys. I'm really excited. And this is a huge moment for the sport of windsurfing and water sport in general, actually. Here we go. A moment to thank our sponsors. And Fiji Airways deserves such praise. Thank you for the Flight to Happiness Award, for the support of all the competitors flying in on your awesome airline. I flew from LA and it was just like flying on a cloud. It was such a pleasant journey. Yes, the flight to happiness for aerials from riders. We've got a good thing going on with Fiji Airways. Thank you very much. Vodafone, who have customly pointed their signal at the SS Thundercloud here in the channel to optimize our frequency and make this work in terms of bringing this to you live. How cool is that? Fiji Surf Company, Ian Muller, and your awesome crew of drivers and passion-driven employees with nothing but smiles in the lineup. It is such a privilege to have you guys helping us out. Victoria Wines, Aquasafe, Tourism Fiji, the Bayview Cove Resort, where we're mostly all staying. Thank you so much at Bayview. It's absolutely awesome. And Bati Protector, the local traditional sun protection. Check out Bati Protector. So those are our sponsors and they will be duly thanked often. We really appreciate the support. 25 seconds before the start of the women's first semi. Game on everybody. Take a moment to just take a deep breath we're jumping into this now. And the moment has arrived. Women's semi number one. There it is. Jane Seaman, Jessica Crisp, Sarah Hauser, and Sol de Greek. What a moment. The heat is on and the flag is up. And our lineup is now going to consist of these four women. No one else is allowed to ride waves right now. And let's hope that stays that way. It can obviously be very tempting. I won't get into that. What you're seeing is roughly 12 knots of wind enough to what we do call trolling in the lineup. You're trolling, you're kind of like, you're dropping a line in the water, hoping to catch something, right? No one yet to get on the scorecard, but Jessica Crisp looks like she's entering to the left of your screen. Let's go to Jessica. There she is. She's actually in the lineup. Our other competitors are not. Jessica Crisp drops into her first wave of the 2023 Fiji Surf Pro and kicks out. It'll be a marginal score. You know, Jessica might have almost looked a little overpowered there. But she had a wave that was going to take her halfway down the line there. 
And I think she just kind of blinked. So went, you know what? That's shallow down there. I'm out. Self-preservation, you guys. There's something to it. Now, the judges aren't going to reward her with a huge score. But let's consider something here. Her gear is still intact. And she is still intact. And that's a win. Get back out there and find another one, Jess. Get on ya. Beautiful moment here at Cloud Break. 2023 Fiji Surf Pro. We are live in the channel at one of the world's best waves. And we hope to bring this to you for the remainder of the day in these awesome conditions that have been presented to us. Looks like it's almost trying to get a little windier. We're somewhere in like the 15 knot category right now, slightly even more than that. Um, if, if I was given the choice to surf or windsurf right now, I would probably windsurf. That decision would have been elementary earlier today because it was firing for the surfers. I saw several standout rides go down. Apparently, one of our competitors, Robbie Swift, got the wave of his life. He's been saying that a lot this week. Go figure. Okay, who do we have here? It's a non-competitor. That's Johnny Price. I see. He's going to go go give a little give a little drop in, huh? All right, on the outside. Sold a Greek on a bomb. Our 13-year-old competitor from Belgium gives it a look. It's a solid wave. Anybody in her shoes would be very much keeping it together here. Here goes Saul with a beautiful looking wave and Jessica Crisp outside of her. Saul with her second bottom turn, keeping it alive here. It's gonna get critical quickly. 13 years old and sailing cloud break and she kicks out for safety right as the wave was gonna hit the critical section there. Here comes Jessica Crisp on her second wave. Much more of a scoring opportunity here. Crisp bottom turns safely in front of the shelf as this wave starts hugging the section. You thought you were far ahead of it. Well, then you got out of there. Sol de Greek and Jessica Crisp are on the board in this heat. Seaman and Hauser waiting patiently for their moment to strike. Kudos to Sol de Greek, who is 13 years young, out at solid cloud break. Dream big, you guys. This is a huge moment in her career. Playing the strategy now on the outside, you're kind of seeing this play out a little bit. You're seeing it play out the following way. And from what I can tell, as you see us on the SS Thundercloud there and this catamaran, that's where I'm sitting talking to you all just to bring the amazing technology of modern day communications here. Furthest downwind, that's Jessica Crisp. You see her on the hot sail as we look at the whitewater line. That's where the waves are breaking. It's a very fine line, you guys. And that's the top of the reef right there. And then heading out is Saul. And further out from her, out of your picture, is Sarah Hauser and Jane Seaman. Nice shot of Jessica Crisp in the lineup. There's Jane Seaman on the red Severn and Sarah Hauser's to your left on the blue Goya.
Dropping in Jane Seaman on a good size wave here. Trying to get her position together and Hauser outside of her. This is a big exchange. These are the two nicest waves to come in so far. Seaman starts her line. Jane running down the line with Hauser behind her on an absolutely bomb offering at Cloud Break. This is what we wanted. The exchanges. Here comes Hauser. Bottom turns. Very, very in position here to make this entire wave. Look what happens when this wave hits the reef now. Here comes Sarah. Smoothly bottom turning on this cloud break offering. Redirecting in. And she's got to get on her horse. Will she make this section? She does. And she's out and surviving that encounter with a bomb set which is going to be filled with very nice lasting images of that experience. Great ride from Hauser. Right. Yeah, just for your for you at home to uh, clearly identify everybody. Saul de Greek in the white helmet and the blue Severn sail. Jessica Crisp is in the yellow hot sail. That's the name of the brand. Jane Siemens in an all red Severn sail and Sarah Hauser on the blue Goya sail. These are all the different manufacturers of this equipment. So you have sales and boards. Sale companies include Severn, Goya, Hot Sales, Simmer Style, Neil Pride, RRD, Gastra, Ezzy, and a few others. Board companies, a lot of sale companies and board companies make both. They're like, trying to be compatible. So most of these sailors who have sale sponsors are in that same sponsor tree for their board sponsor. Here comes Sol de Greek on a really nice looking wave. Jane Siemens behind, excuse me, Jessica Crisps behind her. This is a one to exchange. Look at this setting up here. Sol de Greek on a really nice looking wave. And she's riding this one a little more critically. Credit to her, she's in really good position here. Jessica Crisp running down the line at Cloud Break, trying to make this ride link up, but making doubly sure that she doesn't get caught from behind on it. Jessica Crisp with a very nice looking ride here. Critical stuff going on here at the 2023 Fiji Surf Pro. We'll start updating our scores accordingly quite soon. In fact, somebody could bring the scores to me. That'd be great. Because the scores are dropping. The sailors are catching super nice looking rides. Some replays for you. And you see the kick out that Sol de Greek got put in this position where she felt that the further in she would go, she realized there was a bigger wave behind her. It was a really good move. You ride that inside or too far in and you get swiped by the other bigger wave. Here comes Jane Seaman. She needs to get into the ball game here. She's had a couple good rides though. Here comes a beautiful offering. Jane's from Australia. She likes to sail over on the west side of Australia, Margaret Riva, and some other locations, but this is not a pleasant anything because she's getting a one-way ticket to the shish kebabs experience straight away. It's a really important read. As this wave bends in, you think you're on a mellow little wave and all of a sudden the thing just goes square and runs on you. It's going to happen a lot today. Those who can manage it are the ones who actually see it coming before it happens. Here comes Sol de Greek. And Sarah Hauser is who's on our screen actually. There's Sol. She's finishing up her ride. <coughs> 
excuse me. There's Hauser. This is the start of her ride. She chipped in from below on this one. Sarah, look at the bottom contour of that wave, just hugging the reef. Great angle. Sarah staying ahead of it, designed a board specifically for cloud break. And after one trim turn, she's out. Sarah could have taken that wave a little further, but that would have also put her in the danger zone. No question about it. Jane Seaman, unfortunately, is dealing with shish kebabs, and she is stuck on that reef. This is a good illustration of what happens when you don't make your wave at cloud break. And it's called shish kebabs, well, because there are patches of kind of cushy reef material, and then there are just razor sharp features. And you see she can't really quite walk fully because there's all these little, you know, little caverns and caves. And her job right now is to survey the lineup and start working downwind closer to the channel so that she can get her rig upright and sail out. But you can't sail out where she is. You'll knock your fins off. Precious time elapsing for Jane Seaman. We have 14 minutes left in this heat. And right now, you know, Jessica Crisp has two solid rides. Sol de Greek has two pretty solid rides. Sarah Hauser has one really super nice wave and one other wave that wasn't exactly the whole length of the reef or anything, but it was a good ride and she got like two bottom turns on it. And depending on the judge's opinion about her level of critical riding, we will see a pretty tight battle for second place so far right now. Back to the lineup. And Cloudbreak has a few for herself right now. One thing I'm happy about is that there hasn't been just this bomb set come in that nobody got. We are utilizing the resources effectively. Nobody wants to see a bomb set come through unridden today. So far, so good. It is firing, however. I will tell you that I've seen some setups already that just has me frothing. And all of you at home watching this, I hope are understanding that this is quite a resource that we have here. Cloud Break's one of the best waves in the world for a lot of different reasons. And one of the aspects of it for windsurfing is how it's positioned for the Southeast trades. And they're blowing a good solid 15 knots right now. This is good float and ride conditions. And that means that you're not planing with your kit. You are essentially going in about second to third gear and managing the lineup by waiting for the bigger waves to come in. And that will give you your chance. Generally speaking, if you go on the first wave of a set, you're putting yourself in position to possibly go through what Jane Seaman is still going through on the reef at Shish Kebabs. It, it is, it's tough to watch because precious time is elapsing. And Jane Seaman, you know, who's got a 6.53 on her scorecard, is looking solid. Now, Sol de Greek, yeah, this is kind of the way I interpreted the following. Now, Sarah Hauser's in the lead in this heat with an 11.14 heat total because the judges are interpreting Sarah's riding being more critical than Sol de Greek and more critical than Jessica Crisp. And that's a fair assessment, actually. Sarah's been a bit more tight in the pocket than all of these riders in this semi. Jessica Crisp probably caught the nicest waves. I would say that Sol de Greek also caught really nice waves. But you're not just being judged on the wave you're riding. You're judged on how you are riding that wave. So, first place in this heat so far, Sarah Hauser representing France. Jessica Crisp representing Australia. Sol de Greek in third place representing Belgium. And Jane Seaman still stuck on the reef at Shish Kebabs. 
in fourth place with a 6.53. You'll see some of our competitors in the next heat starting to squeak out there. And that is where we're at. 10 minutes left in this heat. And an in-between moment in it for sure. And for the following reason is that I feel that any of these competitors right now that are actually in the lineup are only going to want to go on a significant set. Nine and a half minutes left in this heat. The first women's semi in the 2013 Fiji Pro. We are here at Cloud Break in Fiji. Quite a unique situation for sure, to say the least. And we are here bringing it to you live aboard a catamaran known as the SS Thundercloud. And conditions are simply amazing. It's spellbinding, to be honest. And we are in between sets, but that won't last long. Again, our standings. Sarah Hauser in first place with a 6.47. That was her first wave, which was written really super well. And a 4.67 for that second wave, which didn't quite match her first wave, to be fair. Jessica Crisp with a 4.5 and a 4.6. I think she kind of did identical rides there in a way. In other words, stayed ahead of it, stayed safe, and kicked out after about a salvo of four turns. Here's Sol de Greek, live action, and she's chipping in. You see she's sailing upwind to the peak here past Jessica, and she is going to get as close as she's comfortable to the peak of the wave, which is already starting to break down the line on her here. Now Sol de Greek Gets herself positioned as the wave wraps in. Here comes Sol. Nice bottom turn. Beautiful looking wave. Sets her line. Gets a cutback. This is probably her best ride so far. She's stayed a little bit closer to the wave. And she kicks out before any potential damage occurs. Seven and a half minutes to go. Here comes Jessica Crisp combing the inside and safely kicking out. And outside of her... To the left of your screen. Sarah Hauser setting up for a ride here. There. There we go. That's Sarah on the very top of your screen. And she kind of kicks out of what was a bit of a soft shoulder elbow. I don't think she saw this second wave. Or that would have probably been the one she would have wanted to be on. And what happens here is that while Sarah didn't get a score for basically what was a kick out, she's got the lineup. And she sees this next wave and wants to strike on this one. This could be a pretty good decision for Sarah. The question is, will she catch it? And it doesn't look like she will. So Sarah will be quick to tack and head back out, still in a really good position in terms of where she is in the lineup. And any amount of surfing knowledge that these four women have will help them in this situation. You'll be able to read this wave and understand what it's doing and where you want to be when those sets come in. That's the name of the game. Fantastic conditions here at the 2023 Fiji Surf Pro. Jessica Crisp has turned around and is angling in to a nice cloud break offering here. Crisp allows the wave to catch up to her and she bottom turns quite safely and quite far away from any potential danger that this wave could offer her. But you see how it's catching up to her. Cloud break's got a sinister nature to it really does and it surprises you how fast the wave is. Jane Seaman has returned to the lineup 
She has gotten through her ordeal at Shish Kebabs. It cost her roughly 15 minutes. Crazy. Looks like Jane Seaman's gonna get an assist from our friend Vince Steves on the jet ski. Now we discussed some of the parameters of what you can do in this situation. Vince can take her out to the furthest buoy and no further. That was our agreement at a meeting yesterday about jet ski assistance. And it looks like, yes, Jane is gonna take the little helping hand here as she flips the sail on Vince's head and, and we're good, we're good, they're fine. Slowly trolling out into the lineup. If you look at the very top of your screen, you'll see the top of Thunder Cloud Reef, which only starts breaking when it's over 15 foot Hawaiian. And check out Sarah Hauser, who is dropping in on a gem. This is a really nice wave and she's reading it perfectly. Look at the fade line. She angles her bottom turn a little bit to the upwind part of this peak so that she can drop in again and punch this signature bottom turn of hers. It's a beautiful thing to watch. She's very in tune with this place. It should come very naturally to her based on her background in New Caledonia. Sarah getting a great ride here and behind her is Sol Degree on a really nice looking wave. Sarah does the jump kick out. Almost a little celebratory there. Here comes Sol de Greek on a critical one. She is deep on this wave and she's going to just barely escape. That was a huge move of self-preservation there. And I'm really glad that she didn't get axed there because that could have been pretty serious for Sol. A, a survival instinct kicked in right there as she was bottom turning. You could see what happens. Cloudbreak started bending in and said, oh yeah? You think you're going to get all soulful on that one? You will pay. And she almost paid. Heavily. But she water starts and she's out. And it's nice to see some jet skis right there identifying how close that was. Nicely done for Saul, who got out of that situation, might not have had the score that she could have, but she's in one piece and her gear's in one piece. Sarah Hauser had an awesome ride there. Faded in, two fades on that wave. Super well played. That's gonna have her in a commanding position here. Let's let our scores update. Sarah Hauser matched her highest score. She's got a pair of 6.47s. 12.94 heat total. Sarah Hauser is in the lead. Jessica Crisp, just under 10 points here, 9.24. And Sol de Grey, who is right there. Her last two waves are her two highest scoring waves. Can she catch Jessica Crisp? Under two minutes to go. If Sol de Grey can put together a four-point ride, she will pass Jessica Crisp for second place and advance into the final. Definitely a big moment. Okay, it's a huge moment. We're looking good here. Conditions are holding, the wind is steady. It hasn't really shown a sign of like picking up more. And as long as we have this, we have all we need to finish this thing today which would be awesome. Some more of those in-between moments here, but this is now the final minute of the heat. And what I see is that Saul and Sarah and Jane are heading out. And the only person who's really in any level of striking distance is Jessica. Jess is giving this a look here she might not know exactly what the standings are. None of our competitors really are being told what the scores are. But some have a better idea about where they're placed in this than others. And I'm pretty sure that Sarah, after that last ride, feels pretty confident that she's making it through this heat. 
Jessica and Saul might know that they're probably looking pretty good, but they're not sure. And unfortunately for Jane, she probably has a pretty good idea that that whole tour of shish kebabs was the last thing in the world she needed to do in this heat. Her loan score is a 2.47, which was basically the result of catching a beautiful wave and having it run right by you. Flags down, the heat's over. That's how we do it on the SS Thundercloud. You raise the Fijian flag when the heat's on and you lower it when the heat's over. Nice little replay of our friend Johnny Price there. He's probably done sailing through the competition area for the day. Hard to resist, to be honest. There, Sol de Greek. Beautiful looking wave. I mean, this is surfing with a sail, ladies and gentlemen. Sol had a great heat, and what she's going to be left with are some awesome images of that survival line. I'm Jane Seaman, and I'm Australian. I was a teenager when I got into windsurfing. Saw people like Scotty McKercher and Michael Galvin doing forward loops, and I was like, I want to do that. <laughs> I mean, Fiji would have to be one of the best places in the world to come to. Um, everyone looks forward to coming here, and I love it. Oh, at Cloud Break, the windsurfing is incredible. It's actually the smoothness of the wave. Uh, you know, back home we have we have a lot of big waves, but often when it's really big, you know, Margaret River can be bouncy. Uh, Nalu can get these evil steps that are just death <laughs> and cloud break just gets more and more beautiful and it's just so smooth. I would come here to do this comp just for the opportunity to sail cloud break with no people. We get the break cleared, there's no surfers, there's only four of you out. Uh, so it's just so worth it just for that. Oh, I think the integrated tour is really good. It's nice to have some proper rankings, you know, and you've almost had like a, a tour that's more focused on jumping and then a tour that's more focused on wave riding. The, the true world champion this year will be someone who's most likely really good at jumping and really good at wave riding. Yeah, so I just go home from here. I'm not going to do the Europe legs. I do have to be a parent sometimes. I'm not sure if I'll do Peru. I'll see how I go here. And then, again, if I do well here, then I'll definitely go to Hawaii as well. Um, I guess I've just come back from an injury. So I tore my medial ligament on my knee and also tore something in my hip. Uh, so I've just really been rehabbing in the you know, six or seven weeks lead up to the event. But I'm feeling really strong for me. It was maybe actually a good thing. Thanks so much, Jane. Champion again. <laughs> <laughs> Kava ceremony before the second women's semi. Ula. Ula. Mava. Love that stuff. Keep it coming. Thank you. Here we are on the SS Thundercloud in the channel looking at none other than Cloud Break. It is so nice to be here. I am just going to reflect on this moment in time. It is such a privilege to be here. And it's not lost on me and it's not lost on anybody in the cement. As Sarah Hauser sails on by, winning that heat. Good job, Sarah. Get ready for the final. Because the final is coming but not before the second women's semi which is going to bring us our other two finalists our first two finalists are as mentioned sarah hauser and jessica crisp and sol degree gets huge credit here for her effort and i want to just give her a little hand there nicely done because when you're 13 years old and you're sailing cloud break that's what it's all about great job Look at the lineup. Uh, what you see there are classic float and ride conditions. Some of these corduroy lines bending in off the top part of cloud break with this heat is on. And Serakita Ofringa, Maria Andres, Angela Cochran, getting ready to do battle. Is this Coco Fuvo? She's also in this final, and she's starting off with a banger. Look at this wave. Looks like Coco got her gear together after her first experience on shish kebabs. And this is a nice wave, and it's starting to run on her too. 
Not quite the same situation. And she gets out just in time. And this is Maria Andres from España ripping into cloud break here, finally getting into action. Yes. Let's not confuse these two sales between Coco Fuvo and Maria Andres. Coco rides for Severn, and Maria Andres rides for Duotone. It does not appear as if Angela Cochran is going to join this final. I do not see her equipment, but we do have multiple world champion, Sarah Kita Ofringa, who is on the Neil Pride sail all the way outside on the green there. So far, it looks like a three woman final, semi-final, sorry, semi-final. And I'm just trying to get my bearings here with you know everything surrounding me. There's a lot going on uh, around me. There's a lot of media buzzing around. There's boats everywhere people getting their equipment ready. But in the lineup and on your screen, here comes Serakita Ofringa. She's not quite gonna get this one. I believe there's a better one behind her and she sees it, but she falls inexplicably right when she needed to get on her horse, but she's a good water starter. And she's not gonna fumble this one away. She's in fact going to drop into this Beautiful looking wave. There we go, Sarakita. Fading into it, letting the wave catch up to her while dropping in diagonally. That's why it's called a fade. Second bottom turn. Ofringa looking really good here at Cloudbreak. Kicks out before anything dramatic can happen. Here comes Maria Andres. Trying to stay ahead of it. Trying to stay in one piece, that's the objective, but also trying to impress the judges. Nice angle from the channel there for Andres. Yeah. Start getting into our scores here shortly as they are getting updated. The road to the final for these women. Here's women's semifinal heat number two, Coco Fuvo in the lead 9.75. She's got two scores, a 5.25 and a 4.5. Coco Fuvo is showing that she belongs in this mix here. Sarakita Ofringa has two wave scores, a four and a 4.5. Maria Andres, 1.75 and 2.0. And here comes Coco Fuvo on the top of your screen behind that graphic. She didn't quite catch that one. This one rolled right under her. This is one of those ones that rolled wide of the pack. Oof. And here's Coco Fuvo on her, what will be her third ridden wave in this semi-final. Dropping in with a full head of steam. Gives it a look, nice bottom turn, not too much approach here. She knows what's about to happen. The wave's going square behind her. And I'm holding my breath because that swiped her. You didn't see it on the screen, unfortunately. Anyway, um, this lineup shot didn't quite illustrate what just happened, but Coco got pinched heavily. Cloudbreak's not taking any prisoners here. It's, it's carnage. And with the assist, hopefully she's okay. She took a good swiping there. Does her rig appear to be in one piece? What you see is that surf boat there, and you see some lines just marching down from the top of the reef. 
And there's nobody actively riding any waves, so we can kind of have this angle here. There is your rescue mission to the left. Coco Fuvo is getting dragged out of the pit with her rig. I hope she's okay. That's the first thing we want to establish here. It was a real close shave there for her. That was extremely close. I'm glad it appears that she's okay. She's gotten dragged to the buoy and that's as far as they can take her. We had that agreement that the buoy was where you have to get dropped off after the assist. Definitely some scenarios playing out here. Fuvo launches back into the lineup. There she is heading out in that red sail. Some of our other competitors in the first men's semi are heading out into the lineup to get ready. Here comes Serakita Ofringa on a nice looking wave. Not too big. It is breaking a little wide of the normal spot. She's got to make sure that she doesn't get caught from behind here, but an aggressive fade and a nice bottom turn. Certainly meaning business here. Nothing behind her. And whether she's aware of that or not, she's going to continue her ride here. Sarakita safely kicking out. Her road to the final looks pretty secure right now. The only woman who's going to challenge her is Maria Andres. Maria getting a second wave score here. 3.75 and a 2. Her total is 5.75. And she's going to need to do a little more than that if she's going to pass Serakito Ofringa or challenge Coco Fuvo. Serakita ups her wave score total now 6.92. These scores are updating, you know, kind of in an interesting fashion here. So they are calibrating a few things. But the end result is that Cor Coraline Fuvo otherwise known as Coco, is in first place. And second place is Serakita Ofringa with a 6.92. Coco's got a heat total of 8.43 right now. So if you're Maria Andres, you need to throw down a 3.18, which is something she's already done, having scored a 3.75 previously. So the battle right now is between Andres and Ofringa. And as if on cue, here comes Maria Andres. And there is a lot of wind on this wave. She's fully stacked. Now, what's the decision for her? She's going to kick out instead of fade in, and I think that was the right decision, actually. Why? Because she wasn't in position. She was a little too far over. So what might be happening is that the wind might be switching slightly more to the offshore right now. But that's not going to really affect Sarakita Ofringa here. Working her way into the lineup and now dropping in again off a of fade line. You can see the apparent wind build as she drops in. She's got a full power sail here and she kicks out as well. Some of these medium-sized waves in comparison to what else is coming in here. These girls are letting them go. And maybe the lesson has been absorbed that once these medium ones hit the inside shelf, they're just running a little faster than they're comfortable letting them go. It's entirely possible. You're just looking at it, you're like, no, that one's going to swipe me. I don't want to go on shish kebabs and waste 40 minutes or whatever. Talk to Jane Seaman about that if it was worth it. Things are tightening up a little bit between Ofringa and Fuvo. 8.17 for Ofringa, 8.43 for Fuvo. It's close. 
the fair degree of separation between Ofringa and Andres. You can see that it's not windy enough to just catch any wave you want at will and just plane into things. Andres is pumping, but the bulk of the wave passes under her to the left. And this is now probably the best wave that these competitors have let roll through without anybody being on it. We want to keep this to a minimum. Here comes Andres on the next one. Hopefully this is now something that she can start getting into the equation here. Using this wave that's swinging a little wide, can she actually get into it? And she's not. Maria's having a little bit of trouble with her positioning. And that can do, do a little bit of, you know, based on her interpretation of the situation. Is she misjudging it slightly? I think she might be. Is she being too cautious by not being in the actual impact zone? Well, you know, maybe. But the fact that she's intact speaks for itself. In contention for the final, that's a different story. Fourteen minutes left in this heat, and then we will be on to men's semi number one. Don't go anywhere. It's about to heat up considerably here. This is a good battle. And it's a good moment for Sarah Kita Ofringa, who has multiple world titles and was known for a while as a freestyle specialist. And rightfully so, because her prowess as a freestyle sailor is off the charts. She's just got an amazing level of ability in some of these technical moves. But she clearly identified herself as a wave sailor recently when I was talking to her, and that was a good thing to hear. And you see this happen a lot in that, you know, aspiring sailors in the professional ranks might use some sort of specialized type of discipline if they're good at it and they're consistently winning at it. Wave sailing has kind of a different allure to it. It's definitely the most visually spectacular form of the sport, especially here at Cloudbreak. With Sarakita having won the Aloha Classic before, looks at this event in a certain way. I think that all the women in this contest are just glad to be here, first of all. But the ones who are contending for the title know that this is one of the gems to hold in a crown here. No question about it. And Sarakita is here for that exact reason, because she's a contender. And she's second place in this heat right now with 12 minutes left in it. And she, her mobility and her level of being able to catch waves is good. You can see that she can just pump the sail a couple times and work her way upwind. She's a very strong sailor. She can handle the apparent wind. Sarakita Ofringa is going to drop into this wave right at the elbow, right where it starts to bend in here. And selects a pretty safe looking shoulder, but she's going to keep turning on it. That's her second turn combination. Drops the sail down low. Sail color matching these picturesque South Pacific waters. And Sarakita kicks out. Quite a lot playing out here. This heat's more than halfway over. It's kind of in the last third of it. There's been some good sets. I believe we're in a bit of a tide swing here. It's been low tide now. The tide's going to come in. And typically when swells are coming up, it brings in the swell. It's like a push. There's Paul Carolides, excuse me. Paul, swimming hard out there. 
Paul is half of the team that we know as Fishbowl Diaries with his wife, Sophie. And they have been having a field day shooting this event. The images that are being produced have been absolutely jaw-dropping. And today's going to be no exception. We're definitely going to be enjoying it tonight. Looking through all the content. But right now, we are trying to get through women's semi number two. And so far, it's been fairly decided. Maria Andres can get back into this, but she's going to need to drop the biggest score of her heat so far. Coco Fuvo and Sarakito Ofringa are right now in the advancing position. Waves continue to roll in here to cloud break, and they're doing so right at that elbow in between the upper peak and the second peak as it starts rolling into shish kebabs. Roughly four foot Hawaiian sets breaking on the reef right now. Some bigger waves have been rolling in from time to time. It's an interesting body of water we're in. Some of these swells are being brewed very, very deep down in the Tasman Sea. And then they fan up to cloud break. And they travel great distances and that's why when you hear something like a 16 second swell period, your ears perk up because the longer period swells feel this reef differently, more thoroughly. And you have these round square waves that hug into the reef here. It's very unique, it's one of a kind. No question about the fact that cloud break is one of a kind. And the fact that the wind does blow side shore here is relevant to the fact that the wave's bending in. So what happens, as I've described this before, is that you're taking off the wind's side shore. And as you are motoring down the line, it goes more and more offshore. It's really quite something. And we're bearing witness to it right now with eight minutes left in this heat. And there hasn't been a score dropped for a little while here. In fact, if I remember correctly, Maria Andres was on a wave that she couldn't quite catch. And then the last score was Serraquita Ofringa's last wave, which is a 4.17, which matches her highest scoring wave. So a pair of 4.17s giving her a heat total of 8.34. She is right behind Coco Fuvo, who has a 5 and a 3.43. Sarakita chipping away here though. This is live action. And this wave offers a bit of a different approach because she's a little bit further behind it. Or so she thinks as the wave loads up and she just simply kicks out. She's identifying the fact that this isn't a bigger wave than what she'd been on anyway. And I don't feel that she felt like riding a smaller wave and putting herself at risk on going onto the reef at Shish Kebabs. It was a wise decision. And it's a little bit like, you know, here we are watching and we want action. You know, we will go, go, you know. We've definitely seen one competitor go through the ordeal. And, you know, I'm watching her right now. Jane's getting some cuts taken care of. It's sharp, it's called shish kebabs for a reason. We want to exercise caution in these situations. It's kind of a two-edged sword because it's a contest and we are demanding that these competitors push themselves. Well, there is a price to pay and we don't want to encourage recklessness. We want to encourage good riding. So far, so good. There's been some epic rides here by everybody in this contest, and there's gonna be priceless memories generated from it. And we are very, very privileged to be bringing this to you. Once again, thanks to that privilege to our sponsors, Fiji Airways, Vodafone, Fiji Surf Company, Victoria Wines, Aquasafe, Tourism Fiji, Bayview Cove Resort, and Bati Protector. And 
we definitely want to give thanks to all the local Fijian villages for allowing us to be here. And Sarah Kita Ofringa dropping into the nicest wave she's been on in this entire heat. And watch out, this thing is going to swing wide on her. She cuts back. This is an awesome looking angle of this classic cloud break wave. Sarah Kita bottom turns in the critical part of that wave and gets blown out the side of it. That was a moment where cloud break showed her teeth. And here comes Coco Fuvo on a grower. This wave is going to offer her a challenging section coming up. It's walling up for Coco. She gets on her horse. She bottom turns down the line and kicks out just before that thing just slammed the door shut. Coco Fuvo with the great escape. Sarah Kita with a bottom turn under a square barrel. Misjudged her cutback slightly, but it was also somewhat of a survival line. But I can promise you that freeze frame moment of her bottom turn in front of that thing will be in her memory banks forever. Big moment in the contest here. Here comes Maria Andres on a smaller wave by comparison to the other competitors and there's a very big set outside coming in now. And that's going to be unridden. As you see our competitors heading out, you will see this shot pan up to the top of the reef and you are going to see the set that's coming in here. There are the lower parts of those lines. As our fearless drone pilot Paul Van Bellen Showing us the lineup at cloud break. Excellent flying, Paul. That's what I wanted to see right there. That's our shot. Look at the majesty of this wave as it bends in around the top of the reef. This is the look. You can just chip in this thing from deep and start slicing it all the way down the line. Look how good cloud break is for windsurfing. What a beautiful wave. Wide open barrel. She has one to herself. That's just amazing. Whew. Try to keep these to a minimum. Wave swinging by unridden. It's a patient game. It's a little bit of cat and mouse in this case. Everything to play for for these competitors. And I am feeling it. What we say in uh, Hawaii, the mana, the energy of this place right now is flowing through me. And I am absorbing centuries worth of waves that have broken on this reef. And it's, it's a good thing. <laughs> it's an amazing thing. This is one of the best waves on planet Earth right in the middle of our winter season in the Southern Hemisphere here. The days are getting shorter. This will be shorter than yesterday. And soon that will change. But the reason there are waves here is because this is the Southern Hemisphere winter. And those storms are brewing under us, thousands of miles away, sending us these swells. And we're in an active period of storm and swell generation. And this was a good one. This was a good shot of swell here. You know, the finer workings of the actual swell direction and period aside, we also have the sun and it's just beautiful to be here. One minute left in this heat. And then we are straight into men's semi number one. And you can see the competitors getting ready. Here comes Maria Andres. You see her chipping in. She's gritting her teeth. This is a big moment for Maria, who needs to get in the mix here. Can still advance with a really solid wave ride. Less than a minute to go. Here comes Andres. Come on, Maria. Let's see it. Beautiful looking wave at cloud break. Hits the reef. And she bottom turns in front of it, getting a bit of a piece of the action here, and she's out. And I think she's understanding that she needs a little bit more time to experience this place and get comfortable. 
but Maria has a smile on her face and certainly very happy to be here. And this isn't going to hurt her rankings at all. She, you know, being here, she's going to get some points. She's going to get into the mix. She's one of our contenders for a world title right now. Serakita and Coco Fuvo and Sarah Hauser have definitely also stepped into the world title equation with their performances thus far. The final is going to play out a great deal of things. A great deal of things. And the flag is down and the heat's over. 